In this video, we'll show you exactly how to edit your videos on iPhone and iPad step by step using one of the most powerful video editing apps for iPhone right now, LumaFusion. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help entrepreneurs and business owners amplify their business and their brand using video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now, every year, the video editing apps on both Android and iPhone seem to get more and more powerful. We recently released a full overview of the video editing landscape on both iOS and on Android. And for right now, LumaFusion was one of our top recommended picks when it came to best iOS video editing app. So in this video, we're gonna dive into a full LumaFusion tutorial. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to edit videos on iPhone and iPad step-by-step -step using LumaFusion. And make sure you stick around to the end because after that, I'll also share three bonus tips that everyone can use to speed up your editing and reduce rework no matter which apps you choose. And while you're here, if you haven't used LumaFusion before, then make sure to drop a comment below and let us know what your current favorite video editing app is for your smartphone or tablet. All right, so now for the tutorial. Okay, so we're gonna open up LumaFusion. So the first step, as it says, is to press the plus button to create your project. So we'll do that plus down the bottom left corner, give the project a name and hit done. And now you can see you get settings for your frame rate, your frame aspect ratio. So we get to choose a heap of different options in there. We'll stick to 30. And your aspect ratio, again, if you're gonna do Instagram stories or you want a one by one video for Facebook or for Instagram, you've got all of that functionality in here. But for this, we'll just leave it as 16 by nine. And we'll go to create project and hit that plus. Okay, so this is the interface. And one of the coolest things about this interface is that you can actually change how it looks. So up in the top right-hand corner, you've got a layout button. And when we press on that, you get to choose different layouts for different stages of your editing project or just to customize so that it works best for you. So we can see a couple of different layouts here. But the one I like to leave it on is just the default, which is the top left. Okay, so this is the overall interface. You've got your playback or preview window up the top right. You've got your toolbox on the right-hand side here, which is where all your editing options are. You've got your plus button, which is where you can add in media. On the left-hand side, you've got a toggle switch to toggle your audio bars. You can see that the audio bars are on there at the moment. If we press that button, we'll hide that. If we press it again, the audio will totally disappear. So I actually like to leave it on this one so I can see where the volume's at. All right, so the first thing we'll do is bring in some video footage. Now you've got a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can actually bring it in from your phone. You can see that we're currently on photos. If your video assets aren't in that photos folder, then you can tap up in the top left corner and you can change where you're actually gonna be importing your files from. I'll close out that one now because up in this top right-hand corner, those three dots, if we press on that, you can also choose import media. And this will let you bring in media from things like iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. So it makes it really easy to import media from those sources as well. So the footage we're gonna use is under photos for me. It's under moments and we'll scroll down and pick this clip here. I'll tap on that to bring it up in our preview monitor. And up in this window, you can play back the clip or you can actually trim down the clip up here before you even get it down to your timeline. So you can see those blue handles on either side of our clip. We can actually pick those up and drag it in to adjust the start time to make our clip start a bit later. And we've got the same on the end. If we wanna trim off the end of our clip up here, we can slide that in as well. Once we're happy with that, then we can hit the import button and that will drop it down into our timeline. Now you don't have to make all of your edits up in that top window. You've got the same controls down the bottom here. When you tap on the clip, you'll get the sliders or the handles that you can adjust to adjust those in and out points here as well. And with the timeline, you can just pinch to zoom in and out on your timeline, and you can tap to drag to swipe along the clip. So for the purpose of this video, I'll bring in a second clip. We'll actually bring in the same one again, just a second copy of it. This time I'll bring in the full clip, and I'll hit the button to drop it down into the timeline. Cool, so you can see we've got two clips in our timeline there. Now with these clips, you can pick them up, you can move them around, we can put it before the other one, or we can pick it up, we can actually put it up a layer so that we've got layered video. This is where you would put your B-roll video footage. So if we're talking about something on the bottom video layer, 
and you want to show it with an example, then you can drop it up on the layer above and that will then show and play over the top of your video file while you're playing it. And again, you can adjust the start time, the end time on these clips and pick them up and move them just by tapping and holding and dragging the clip to where you want to start and finish. So it's really, really powerful. Okay, so we'll zoom in on our clip here and say we want to remove the start of this clip. Now we can, as we've just shown you, tap on the clip and drag that handle to adjust the start time. Or if there's a chunk of your video that you want to remove in the middle, so we want to put a cut about here, you can actually come across and hit the scissors on the side and that will split our clip in two. So now we've got two clips here in our timeline. So if we want to delete one of them, we can select the one we want to delete and then press the trash can here on the left and that clip has been removed. And you can see that it's actually kept our B-roll clip on the top here in sync. It slid that across for us in time while we deleted that clip. So that is awesome. And this is the functionality that you'll get in professional editing software or proper editing software that you're used to on your desktop computers. Okay, so you go through here and you would cut down your video files, you'd add all the cuts, you'd remove anything that you don't want in your project, and you'd add your B-roll footage and get everything edited down first. Now while you're editing your clips, there's also a few other tools and things that you can use to help refine your edit and get the look that you're after. So we'll select a clip and we'll come over here to this toolbox. And in here you can edit the clip. Let's go edit. And this is where we can pinch to zoom on the top preview window here. We can zoom in on the clip and position it to how we want it. We can rotate the clip if we want to. We want to correct the horizon. You can also add keyframes in here, which is really powerful to create your own custom animations or movement in your videos. So we'll hit the plus here on size and position and that'll create a keyframe at that point. So that'll lock our settings and everything at that point. And then we just need to come across to where we want that effect or movement to finish. We add another keyframe and at that point we make adjustments to what we want. So let's just make it a bit bigger, maybe reposition the shot. So it's going to transition between or move between these two pointers. I'll rewind here now so we can play that back. So this was the start. And then at that point, it's going to start transitioning between those two settings that we had set. So in our case, it's making it bigger. So that's really cool. And up in the top right hand corner, you've also got some default or presets that you can apply. Now we're definitely not gonna cover off on all the features in here because there are a heap of them, but you've got simple things like your size adjustments. You've got the ability to flip or mirror your video files as well. And if you're needing to rotate your footage, then you can rotate your footage easily in here as well. Down the bottom, you've also got speed adjustments. You can also adjust the volume of your clip in here as well. If we hit that volume button down the bottom, you can see you can adjust the volume up and down. You've also got some cool audio filters that you can have, a high pass filter, a low pass filter, if you wanna change how your audio sounds, or maybe remove some sounds in your audio. And the third one on the bottom here is your color and effects. So if we have a look in here, then there are some presets that you can use to apply. There's a great frame grab there. Let's scrap that across a bit. Not that I'm probably gonna find a better one. But you've got some presets here that you can use to start to dial in the colors, or you can pick any of these presets and you can come down to the bottom here and you can customize them up. So you've got the ability to adjust the levels of the, the colors, so we can increase the blacks by dragging this along, change the grays as well. I'll undo this because I'm making it look really bad, but you have so much control over the image here. But one of the coolest things is that you've also got your saturation, your brightness as well, but you've also got the ability to dial in the individual colors. So there's a heap of color correction tools. And I've got to say it is the most comprehensive set of color correction tools across any app on iOS or Android. So I'm really impressed with this. Okay, so we're back out of this now. Now let's take a look at the audio. So if we want to bring in some audio clips, we'll come back up here in the top left corner. Let's go to royalty free music. So there's music that comes with this app as well. Let's just pick sentimental, romantic, why not, um, touching moment. Cool, so when we select it, it brings it up in the preview monitor. And again, we can adjust how much of it we wanna bring in by adjusting these sliders or handles here. But if you just wanna drop that audio track down into your timeline, then press the import button. And you can see it's now a green track that's dropped down into our timeline. We can again, touch on it, slide it, bring it back to the start of our clip here. 
Now, if you really wanna dial in your audio and adjust the individual volumes for each of those tracks, we'll hit back up here and select audio. You might need to press it a couple of times. And when we hit play now, you can actually see the different audio levels and you can adjust them while you're playing. So you can slide this down to make the music quieter or you can make the talking louder. Okay, so we'll zoom in now and we'll add a title in here as well. There's two ways you can do it. You can hit plus down the bottom here and choose overlay title or you can come up the top here and choose a preset title. So we'll pick titles. There's a heap of presets in here that you can use that have already been created that you can just edit up. So let's just pick the most basic one, classic main, and we can press on that and drag it down into our timeline. So we'll drop it down there somewhere. And again, we can pick it up, we can move it around, we can make it longer or shorter using those handles. And when we wanna edit it, we tap on it, we hit the little toolbox on the side and we'll choose edit. So there's some more presets that you've got over here for this title, or again, you can customize it up to, to the way that you want it to look. You can also move the text around the screen. You can also adjust the text box size as well. So if you wanna have text wrapping around in here, then you can make a bigger box, or you've got all your size adjustments and everything down here as well. Now, if you wanna actually edit the text, which I'm sure you'll all really want to do, then come over here to the edit button. This will let you type in your text. So we're back out of that now. And another thing you can do in here is add transitions onto your video clips as well. So fade ins, or you can get pretty crazy with transitions. So we'll add a cut in our timeline here. Then we can come up the top here and choose transitions. So for this one, I'll just grab a dip. So I'll press and hold on it, drag it down into the timeline, right at that join. When we let it go, we've now got a transition that happens between our two clips. So once you're happy with your video and you wanna save it out, you just come up the top here to the export button. You can choose movie, audio only, you can archive your project or you can save a screenshot. So let's just choose movie. And you've got the option to save it to your Photos app, iCloud, Dropbox, heap of other options in here, direct to YouTube, direct to Facebook or Vimeo or you can just save it out so you can use it on other apps. So it's gonna save it direct to your phone. What I would imagine most people will be using would be the Photos app or maybe the bottom one, other app. So we'll just choose Photos app here and you can see you get a heap of settings, once again, to get the maximum quality of your video and to really dial everything in. So this video was shot at 1080p, so it's already defaulting at 1080p, but you have the ability to export in higher or lower quality depending on the videos that you're creating. Again, you can adjust the frame rate, you can adjust your video quality and bit rate. So if you want the best quality out of this, then choose extreme 50 megabits per second. You can also change your video codec as well. At this point, I recommend still sticking with H.264, but you have the option there to change that up. So as you can see, heap of options in here. You've even got the ability to edit and export 360 VR video as well. So once you're happy with those, come up to the top and hit share with these settings. And that will save the video out to your device so that you can then share it on your social media or wherever you want the video to go. So that's it, you've now got all the basics for some really powerful editing right from your iOS device. Now to get your editing done even faster, I've got three tips that'll help you speed up your workflow no matter what editing app or device you're using. And these are only gonna save you more time the bigger your projects get. So tip number one is to focus on your content first. So what a lot of people will do when it gets to editing is that they'll import their video files and they'll start color correcting them and adding effects and all the things to make your videos look good first instead of cutting down your content. If you do that, you're actually gonna slow down your device or your system for editing because it's going to have to apply all of those color effects and everything that you've applied to your timeline while you're editing. So it's gonna slow down your system or your phone, but also you might find that there's something actually wrong with your content, that you've missed something or that the audio has gone bad or that the lighting is terrible and it's not fixable. So you actually wanna find that out as soon as you can in the editing process in case you've gotta go and reshoot something instead of much further down the track when you've got everything color corrected and all your effects in there. So focus on cutting your content down first and afterwards get to all of your color correction and effects from there. 
Tip number two flows on from that and it's actually a quick way to cut your content down fast and that is by editing backwards. So with a video like this where you're presenting to camera, typically what will happen is that you will only move on when you're filming to the next take, the next paragraph, the next sentence once you're happy with the best take which means that the best take that you're presenting is actually the last one. So when you get to your editing, if you actually edit backwards, so right to left instead of left to right, then you'll actually be hitting those best takes first, which saves you the hassle of playing through your footage, starting the editing, marking your in and out and adding your cuts, and then finding, oh, this actually isn't, I did another take, this isn't the one. And then you've got to do that again. And you might find that three or four times, depending on how good you are presenting to camera. So by editing backwards and starting at the end of your video files and working backwards through it, you'll actually remove that hassle because you'll always hit the best take first. So edit backwards. And tip number three, for best quality, you wanna make sure that all of your settings match. So whatever frame rate and resolution that you're recording your videos in, wherever possible, you actually edit in that same frame rate and resolution, and then you're exporting at exactly the same. So that way you're maintaining the same quality throughout. So if you're filming your videos at 1080p, 30 frames per second, then make sure you set up your editing project to be also 1080p, 30 frames per second, and then again for the export. So if the three of these don't line up perfectly, then it can reduce the quality of your videos, but it can also introduce things like motion issues. So if you've got lots of motion and movement in your shots, then it could be really jagged or jittery as you're exporting your video files. So it's a good idea to check what your settings are in your camera and match them wherever you can in your editing project and your export should match that as well. So now with your editing sorted, it's time to make sure that you're getting the best quality video. So we put together a free PDF guide that's packed full of tips that you can implement right now to maximize the quality of the videos that you're shooting with your smartphone. Click the link on screen to grab it for either iPhone or Android and I'll see you soon.